Another scandal for the National Football League breaking overnight. One of its brightest stars has been charged. Many with professional athletes, such as Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, and Floyd Mayweather, are household names. But some of their notoriety is for the wrong reasons. According to the CDC, nearly one in three American women will have experienced some form of domestic abuse. The NFL again reeling from the fallout from the Ray Rice brutal beating video. Now another scandal emerging. One of the league's premier players, Adrian Peterson, indicted for child abuse. Now outside the lines reached out to all five of the women Mayweather is either convicted of or accused of assaulting. The National Football League used to have a good name. <laughs> While some can laugh, growing concerns persist about a variety of sports issues topping the news headlines, including entitled athletes doing what they want and getting away with it of the aggressive nature of sports bleeding into personal lives. And as Tennessee State University sports journalism professor Tommy Boris adds, domestic violence involving athletes becoming more prevalent. I think we're hearing about more of them because now victims are more likely to come out in public because they feel like, at least in some cases, that they have a better chance of being believed. And I think social media has a lot to do with that too. Some question whether the number of incidents of domestic violence involving athletes has risen, or, as Tennessee State University Athletics Director Teresa Phillips wonders, has the reporting of incidents by the media increased? I think one of the good things that is happening is the technology that we have really now tells a story that maybe was being hidden before. You have the cameras in the elevators, cameras out on the streets, people with cell phones who will just start recording. Dr. Rich Tyner offers a unique perspective as a professor, sports announcer, and faculty representative to athletics at Belmont University. He says we teach athletes to be very aggressive on the field and then turn it off. He does not excuse the behavior, but acknowledges that we nurture it by sending mixed messages. From a very young age that we teach little boys to hit harder on the football field, we sort of encourage and celebrate that aggressive behavior in a sports context and then expect a child or a young person or even an adult just to be able to turn it off. TSU Athletic Director Teresa Phillips believes in second chances. But with third and fourth opportunities, these exceptions hurt the athlete and surrounding environment. And you're really creating that monster that now thinks, hey, they're above the law. They're exceptions that are made for me. The adoration that we put on them, the role models that whether they want to be that or not, they have to be held to a standard that this is completely and totally unacceptable. The high-profile Vanderbilt rape case begins Monday, and we know... Domestic violence cases are not just prevalent among professional athletes. Embroiled over the last couple of years in a high-profile rape case, Vanderbilt University Athletic Director David Williams says the victim, of course, includes the female student, but also the athletes, the athletic department, and the university. You try to take it to some degree as a teaching moment and try to make some positive out of it. You hate for it to go to that level before the positive comes out. Count one, we find Mr. Vandenberg guilty of aggravated. One thing I have noticed is that type of behavior, more likely than not, is accompanied with alcohol. I know very little of situations where alcohol wasn't part of it. Williams says they have programs for educating student athletes about what is consent, but he also says we have to understand the culture of many athletes and the baggage they bring to campus. Kids of today don't necessarily date like kids of 15, 20 years ago. And until you understand this, the concept of what they call hooking up, until you understand that, you're going to be fighting upstream. Williams says in addition to educational programs, they partner with the YWCA and the Campus Women's Center, while he too delivers his own message. I try to talk to the young men in a very simple sort of thing of saying, every woman is somebody's sister, mother, daughter. And do you have a sister, mother, or daughter? And it at least stops them to think about it. We should recognize the fact that because we are in a high-profile industry, if you like, or activity, we'll get called out more than other people. But by the same token, we should use that to try to teach and educate and influence. TSU's Phillips says the solution will start with the young male athletes. Men standing up and saying, this is wrong and I'm not going to accept it, I'm not going to cover it for my male counterparts, and that men will demand that other men treat women in a respectful manner. I'm Terry Likes. You're listening to Tennessee Matters on the Tennessee Radio Network.